So I'm sorry I look like one of the guys off of Workaholics, but this is how I look sometimes when I shoot. So today we have this. This is the dual truck. This is from Spielberg's first movie. And you're joining me halfway through the shoot because this morning was a rush and it was very early. And we didn't actually know if we were going to get to shoot this truck or not. Uh, this is the truck from Spielberg's first movie, and it's pretty amazing. I mean, it looks great. It was apparently used in some music video and some stuff, but they repainted it back to dual. And uh, this is it. We're going to drive it around. I'm going to try to drive it, see what happens. Apparently, it's a bitch to drive. This is a dual truck. It is a Peterbilt. I have no idea what Peterbilt, but it is a Peterbilt. And from what I know, Peterbilts are quite nice trucks these days. The new ones are the So the inside, which no one's ever seen, on the movie, the inside of the dual truck looks like this. It's, uh, aside from the rust, it's actually quite a nice, quite a nice truck. The interesting thing is this box, if you look inside, it's a box. That was apparently where the cameras went. No, there's no camera mounts in there. But, that's what they say. They say that this was where the camera would go. And it would go in this window, I mean, it shoot through this window, out the front of the truck. So that's what the inside of the Peterbilt dual truck looks like. It's got a passenger seat, uh, sure. It's got a steering wheel, it's got gauges, it's got a lever and a lever and the, the pedals that we all know, three pedals, yes, a nice rusty fan. And that's the front end. So somehow I'm gonna drive this thing. He already told me I'm probably not even going to shift out of first, so. And so this is the actual trailer itself. Special construction, whatever that means. And there's the uh, famous flammable sign. Full of rusty holes. Giant wheels. Flammable. Ready to go. Flammable. So, yeah, that's the dual truck that we're doing today. And uh, probably won't be doing sunsets today because honestly, it's a giant truck, rusty truck. And does that really make any sense? Not really. But the day started off cloudy, so it's kind of interesting. Testing, one, two, test. <laughs> I gotta remember how to drive this thing, Frank. Is that complete? I got you. God, Ed, you're just playing. Uh. Check. <laughs> All clear. <laughs> semi for the first time in my life. <laughs> this thing doesn't have power steering. No, absolutely. <laughs> no AC, no power steering, none of that, none of that fancy stuff. And it doesn't even have good traction either. So if Dennis Weaver could have just pulled into some loose sand somewhere, he would have had him. Because this thing gets stuck on a banana peel. <laughs> Well, actually, I'm over 30 years. This truck is one that you just can't master. See how I put that in the center position? Yeah. That's that's taken off pretty good right now. Okay. So 
So we'll put that in neutral. Here's your brake over here. Push this down. And it locks it down. Okay, cool. Now this was the handbrake. You know, in the movie, he, it shows him to... Yeah. That's for the trailer is what that is. Okay. Uh, there's one thing that this truck doesn't have, but I do have it, is the time clock speedometer that they call oh. it a title tail. Yeah, yeah. It had one mounted in the in the original truck that went over the cliff. Mm -hmm. It had that in it, and we have that. We just haven't put it back in here. Okay. But anyway, let me see if I can. I'll come around. The very most important thing that you have to know, whether you know anything about a truck at all, yeah. is when you get it moving, make sure you know how to make it stop. Okay. And we're okay. And the way you're going to do that is you're just going to push the clutch in and hit the brakes gently. Don't, don't smash it. Just, and you're in neutral right there. Okay. So as long as you know how to make it stop, we're both safe. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to do my drive now in uh, this giant truck, and uh, hopefully we don't die. Okay. So I've never driven a truck before. You know that, right? I uh, know. You're getting ready to. Um, and you know, the start out, your first truck ever... To start out in the hardest truck there is to drive, <laughs> that's pretty good. If you can accomplish that's it, then true. you should. You're probably going to want to stop right here. <laughs> oh my god. There you go, push the brake in. When we get up here, it's going to start spinning. Okay. So that's going to be the biggest problem. See, there comes one. Yeah.
but to be honest, compared to some other shows, it's not that much equipment. It's exactly what I need to do a good job to make sure the quality that everyone's used to is always there. Not only that, but also improve the quality because we set a certain benchmark for ourselves that you have to maintain, but also people want more, so you have to try to bring it up a bit. That's why we bought this thing. And that has made the job a lot easier and better in making these cars come to life on the road, which is what this is all about. His neighbor actually has yeah. got one of the Duke cars. Oh yeah, the Duke's a hazard. Yep, he's got yeah. Donnie Brad. There's I can't keep yeah, remembering yeah, yeah. his he's, name. He, I just talked to him today. I can't remember his name. He's his name's nice Matthew. Guy. Matthew got a yeah. little boy. That little boy they came down one day. Everywhere I, I go, anybody that has a movie car, they have a Duke's. Uh, it a seems like everybody and their brothers got one. Got one. Keith Donnie. King got he's one. A, does he really? Yeah, he's I, got one. I didn't even know that. Where are you going? <laughs> Petrana. Tell that I'm, I'm driving back to Charlie's. I think it actually has a little gas engine behind you. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I would get that in my shop. Yeah. <laughs> that was a go kart. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Huh. It's been quite nice shooting here because it's all green. The weather's finally cooled down a little bit. And uh, it's just really, really nice farmland. He owns, uh, this is Brad, he owns uh, this trucking business, that one. And uh, he's got all these trucks just laying around. He's got corn fields, he's got other trucks laying over there. But inside of that garage is some amazing trucks and a collection of antique trucks are in there. It's not a bad living to be honest. It's kind of nice. It's kind of attractive. Simple living. Trucks. Follow your passions. Do what you want to do. And He's got apparently 80 acres here. So In my books that's not that bad. Maybe it's not LA. Maybe it's not the big city life. Maybe it's not Hollywood. But there's something to it. Maybe you'll walk in the corner. So for you truck aficionados, spelled A-U-T-O, um, this place is pretty much heaven. And he does a lot of truck shows, so if you're ever in uh, South Carolina, around the, North Carolina, around the Charlotte area, you know, you'll see some amazing trucks here. There's some beautiful stuff here. Look at that, look at that antique fire truck right there. 